<laughs> Amy. <laughs> like our, our colleague has like this nice things on Zoom where you either get clap of hands or some, you know, fireworks. I don't know how to enable it, but it's <laughs> it's the Apple iOS when you do the gestures. <laughs> All righty, let's get started. So good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are tuning in from today. I'm Melissa Riley, your co-host today with Dr. Fawaz Ghali. How's it going, Fawaz? Yes, great. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Actually, it's kind of like nice to be like as a speaker in the office hours. So I'm looking forward to this session today. So how are you today? You good? I am good. Excited for this session too. Well, we're both excited for today's session on boosting similarity search with real-time stream processing and diving into the goal of similarity search. Just a couple things before we get started. We'd like to let everyone know this session is being recorded and recording will be available after the session to rewatch at your convenience. And if you have any questions during the session, feel free to add them to the chat. Um, I will be on the chat monitoring it and Fawaz will answer them as we go along or saving it during our Q&A part. Now let's get to it. Over to you, Fawaz. Thanks so much, Mel. Thank you. Uh, so welcome everyone. It's very nice to actually talk to you on a very important topic. And what I wanted today is kind of give you an idea why this is an important topic. Um, as you can see from the title of the presentation, we're going to talk a little bit more on uh, two topics today. So we're going to touch a little bit on the stream processing and real time story, but also the similarity search and how you can post it. So what kind of challenges with similarity search and why you need to care about this topic. Obviously, uh, we kind of like have limited time, so I want to make sure that we stay in contact. And uh, if you have any question about this topic or anything relevant, to, feel free to tag me or leave it in the chat box. But also, you're welcome to join the community on uh, community Slack. So the Helicast community Slack is a way for you to ask questions, figure out how to use Helicast if you're new to Helicast. Or if you already know how to use the platform, but you're not sure about the configuration and so on, we welcome everyone to join. It's an opportunity for you to ask questions and enhance the, your experience with Hezecast. So usually I start with some slides about Hezecast for who are new to Hezecast. And um, today I'm going to do it differently. I want to jump straight into the um, use case and my demo so you get to know what we're trying to build. So if you are limited on time, um, maybe you can actually also have this as a recorded session. So it's going to be recorded. We're going to contact you if you are busy. So make sure just to leave your contact details uh, where we can uh, send you the copy. So. Um, the cool idea about similarity search and vector databases are, you know, not recent. And essentially, what you get from vector databases and similarity search is way more in terms of the unstructured data. Um, in simple terms, if you're new to this topic and if you don't know much about vector databases and similarity search, um, you have some kind of unstructured data with uh, it could be. Um, images, videos, or even text. And in all cases, what, what we're looking to do is to encode some of or most of the unstructured data. And I will explain why I say some uh, in a few minutes. Um, so if we look at a movie recommender system, um, we can encode the description of the movie. And the same thing for the search query. So we're going to encode the search query when users search for a specific description or a specific topic within the description and so on. And then we use some kind of similarity function. So usually it's cosine similarity, but it's not important. It's not important what similarity function you use at this moment. Um, I just want you to focus mainly on the similarity search and vector databases. So that's pretty straightforward, right? You have some movies, you have some descriptions attached to it. 
um, you encode the description. Uh, you use, of course, you need to use large language model to do the encoding. And essentially, you do the same thing for the search query. So when users search for a, move, a description of this movie, you encode it, and then you match between the encoded um, vectors. That's what the structure is, or embeddings, if you want to call it, and then they get results. So now, what is the challenge for this type of architecture and uh, uh, platform is um, is kind of like you look at it in terms of uh, latency. So how close real time you want the real results, but also if you want to expand it. So, for example, if we look at creating a further uh, or more advanced search query, for example, so a sense of just searching for a movie description, you want to search for a movie and actor, uh, you want to have a, some kind of architecture where you can do such, such, such a query. And this brings us to the topic here. So the challenges with vector databases um, are kind of like time and latency, obviously, and I'll explain what time decay is, but also like more advanced structures. And if you're coming from a database background, essentially what we're talking about here is many to many relationship. And that's why Hazelcast fits nicely in this area. And it's one way of integrating Hazelcast with similarity search. Uh, and um, uh, it's very cool when it comes to uh, performance and, uh, of course, if you try to minimize latency. So if you have list of actors and list of casts, you want to do mix and match or, you know, many to many relationships, what you can do is store this type of structured data. Now we're talking actors as structured data and, for example, casts as structured data in Hazelcast. Uh, of course, we're using map structures here, but uh, it varies from the use case uh, to different use cases. And we use some API and SQL. Um, I come from data science background, so today you will see this demo in SQL. And then you get the combination between movie, search query, and actor. So this is pretty nice, but how do we implement it? If you're new to real-time stream processing, I think it makes sense just to go through this topic uh, before we actually proceed to the Jupyter notebook and the demo. So uh, you see here is the real-time architecture where we talk about two different types of data you ingest it into your platform. You have a real-time data coming could be coming from Kafka topic or Apache Pulsar, and we have batch data, which is you know kind of like what is is normal for batch is stored in database or a file system and so on. And you want to ingest these two different types of data into your platform and do enrichment. So this is a simple architecture. You can use it in your uh, domain or in your you know application. You don't need to change much to change your batch application into real time application. And I will explain how you can do it. And as soon as you ingest it into Hazelcast, you can do data enrichment. So you can provide context to your application. So um, as, as just a reminder, if you have any question about Hazelcast or similarities, feel free to leave your questions. Uh, I'm quite happy to answer these questions. So just a reminder for, jo for joining us now. And um, I'm going to now switch the screens. I want to, uh, you to see how it works in action um, and how fast and simple it is compared to other stream processing uh, solutions. So the beauty of Hazelcast is how fast you get it up and running, how simple it is to write such a pipeline with minimal lines of code. So let me switch screens quickly so it becomes easy what you need to do here. So on my machine now, I have Hazelcast running in a, as a Docker image. So I just pulled a Docker image for Hazelcast. And what I'm going to use, I'm going to use SQL to run the demo here. So my SQL statement is quite straightforward. So essentially, I'm going to generate a stream of data. And this stream of data in this use case is some users in my system. And within this, uh, alongside the users, we have also actually some orders as well. So these orders can be anything. 
what is important at this moment is to think about why you need to have a streaming data. So we're trying to generate data here. And once soon we generate the data, we're going to see it will create stream and will actually populate in real time. So if I copy this command here, I'm going to take this command and paste it in uh, my command line. So let me clear this one. So now I have Hezekas equal interface. Uh, of course, you can do it with Java, with Python. Um, just trying to simplify it if you're coming from data science or machine learning background. So if I run it, this command will generate or create a map with the streaming data. Now, if I want to search for a specific user, I can simply say, give me all orders coming with from a user, in this case, or customer called for us. So what you see here on the screen is quite nice thing. So this is a stream of data generated in real time. It's very important to understand this is real time data. It's not coming from database or it's not coming from file system. It's being generated in real time, ingested into Hazelcast. So this is the first data type you work with. So I'm going to stop it here. But at the same time, if I try, and try to run it again, you will see orders on appears back on the screen again. And this tells you that these orders are actually generated in real time. So now the second part of this is the batch data. So for that part, what I'm going to show you now is how you can create it. So in this example here, second map will have my batch data. In simple terms, I have some features, and these features actually are relevant to um, you know, some, some kind of context to your application. So I've got this question now um, from the audience. Is it possible to you know, have the same architecture in Java? Yes. Hezekas is built on top of the JV. Java virtual machine, so you should be able to replicate it in Java. In fact, also you can do it in Python. I will show you. Um, but let me just go through the second map, which is uh, relevant to the context. Now we're going to populate it with some batch data. So the difference between first map and second map, first map is real time data, and second map is batch data. So here, for example, you see user for us has like Feature one, blue, feature two, red, and feature three, green. Now, if you want to do the enrichment between real-time data and batch data, essentially it's a simple join statement in SQL. Of course, it depends on the conditions and criteria. So to me, if I want to search for um, all orders where extra two or feature two is red, I can simply use this join statement here. And, and you will see now orders appear on the screen and second features uh, or second feature is red. Now, this is combination between real-time orders as well as batch data or batch um, features to provide context. Now, we moved from just having orders to provide some features attached to it. So hopefully this is a clear. Uh, I'm going to stop it here because uh, I think this is uh, uh, what I wanted to cover for the real-time ar architecture. So I'm going to go back again to the presentation. And here, the concept of time decay is quite important, regardless if you use stream processing or not, if you use Hazelcast or not. The longer you wait on your data and your information, the less value it has. Um, now, if I ask you what you did today, you might remember if I ask you what you did last week, you might struggle a little bit what you did last month and so on. So the value actually becomes less and less the longer you wait onto it. And we try to min minimize latency here. Now, of course, question is how fast is too fast? And we're talking about milliseconds in these type of applications. So every time you think about vector search and similarity search, you need to factor in time as well and time decay and having hazelcast uh, as a platform for your you know similarity search is quite important in terms of minimizing latency so your orders could be or your events could be coming from a data source 
you ingest it into some kind of a message bus. In this case, we're using Kafka, Pulsar, or AWS Kinesis. You do data enrichment inside his ACAST, and then suddenly you decouple between your data source and your data sync. Now, now we want to talk a little bit about Hazelcast. Who are new to Hazelcast? I would love you to try out Hazelcast. Uh, Hazelcast is open source, so you can go to GitHub, download it. We will leave some links how you can download it in the chat. Uh, we have very rich documentation about the platform functionality, and so I would love uh, you to try it out with our, with this demo, as we will, uh, you know, send it. Uh, uh, afterwards or you know with simple demos like hello world see how fast you can get it up and running it's very simple it's just a simple jar file you can attach it in embedded mode if you want and get it up and running in few lines of code or you can write it in client server and of course the platform itself has two main components so stream engine stream processing engine as well as the fast data store you have all capabilities in machine learning uh, as we will show you today you will have feature store as well as the similarity search and you can run machine learning pipelines right so you get basically the best in terms of uh, um, tooling and less uh, learning curve why i'm saying less because you don't need to learn so many tools or you don't need to add so many tools to your stack uh, so that's the beauty of Hazelcast. Of course, there are some components relevant to um, disaster recovery, security management, and monitoring. And, but for the sake of today's um, uh, demo, we're going to talk a little bit how you can use Hazelcast stream processing and fast data store with a um, similarity search. So hopefully this is kind of like gives you a, an overall what Hazelcast is. Um, I think what makes more sense, if you can go to GitHub, not now, just stay a little bit till we finish, and then uh, download it from GitHub and uh, play around with it. Of course, we, we want to make sure that data is being uh, deserialized and serialized, and this is crucial. I've seen it in so many applications that it's not being handled well. So it could be when you write your data, when you read your data, of course, when if you want to do replication or you want to save your data to the disk, or even if you want to do a, re a re rebalance between multiple clusters. Um, so this is very important. Now you might be wondering, yes, you can use vector database. You can use X tool for stream processing or X tool for fast data store. Uh, let me give you some mm, a cool story uh, what happened last summer. I tried to paint my house, so I took some time off from work and I thought I can do it myself. So that's the DIY approach, do it yourself. And I spent two weeks trying to do um, or to repaint the house and I did really a bad job. So I ended up hiring someone professional to do it. So that's what the DIY approach they hear. For stream processing and fast data store, you can have multiple data sources. At some point, you need a stream processing engine. So it could be Flink, for example, which is quite good in terms of stream processing. At the same time, you need fast data store and it could be Redis or, or any other fast data store. And of course, when it comes to processing the data, if you want to apply machine learning, you need a feature store attached to it. You need engine for ML inference and only then you can provide results. Um, what is uh, not recommended, and I would actually encourage you not to do, is DIY approach. Why? Because you're going to spend uh, more time on integration and more time on maintenance. Of course, you need to learn all these tools. Uh, last week, we were at Kafka Summit in London, and I, I can see that there is a frustration in the stream processing uh, community about what tools to use and how hard it is to use these tools. Uh, so we're trying to simplify it. Um, for the similarity search and vector databases, um, if you're new to similarity search, I'm going to just go quickly here. Um, it's very important to understand we're trying to have data representation for unstructured data and we can acquire the unstructured data after we encode it through vectors or embeddings and basically we need to do ranking and information retrieval 
of course you need to have some kind of architecture for it so place to store it vector databases are great to do it but again vector data are missing the real-time element uh, so you can use the vector databases to store unstructured data text images and so on uh, you need ml embeddings i will show you today in jupyter notebook and then you can do vector similarity so uh, let's just now move to our demo and look how we can implement it so hopefully you can see my screen so uh, we can uh, um, demonstrate uh, the concept of boosting similarity search with hazelcast and we're going to use quadrant as vector database it doesn't have to be quadrant it's your choice what data vector database you need and if you really need also a vector database so this is also nice thing to have so i would love to hear from you about you know your large language models applications or what type of use cases for vector databases or even like how you can link it with hazelcast uh, it's very nice area to learn about it and hazelcast make it super easy to learn um, so for running this demo today, what we're going to do, uh, I'm using Python now. Again, you can do the same thing with Java or SQL, but I'm just trying to show you different flavors. Um, someone asked me to, on the chat whether we provide also uh, Kubernetes support and Docker. So yes, uh, if you see my screen now, you will see I have some Docker images running. Uh, I'm using Hazelcast as a Docker image, so it's running. I'm using Quadrant as vector database. It's not important here what vector database you use. It's your choice. And at some point, you need to think about, you know, how you can minimize it so without you run the same demo, but without using vector database. So um, if you're interested, reach out to me. Um, I can show you how to actually use the same capability without a vector database. So um, just to go through the demo, um, this is Python code. Um, I'm going to explain it, but it's pretty straightforward. You need to run Docker image for Hazelcast. You need a client for Hazelcast. So as you see, we're using Python. And um, I already installed it. So if I run it now, it's going to give me it's been satisfied. In your case, if you don't have Hazelcast, you need to download it from uh, Docker, or you can run it in, uh, you know, download it as source code. And also, you need a client for it. And in here, we also need to repeat the same thing for the vector database. So you see, I'm running now Quadrant here. I'm using the Quadrant client as well. Again, it's been satisfied because I already did this. But in your case, if you run it first time, um, you're going to see different output. Uh, of course, you need to use a transformer model. So in this case, to do the embedding, so moving from actual text or unstructured data into embeddings and vectors, I'm using a library called Sentence Transformer. It's pretty straightforward uh, to use, and I just need to install it, obviously. Um, you just ignore this um, uh, message here. So we're going to now start implementing the solution. So I'm going to import the Quadrant client. I'm going to also import the Sentence Transformer. I'm using this model here to create embeddings. So this is your choice as well, which model to use. Uh, obviously, there are a couple of way, a couple of models that you can use. It depends on performance and how you know you want your results and what type of use cases. And the actual data. You see here, so I, I'm going to create movies um, in terms of, you know, a specific for description. So I have ID, I have a title for the movie, and I have description. Um, it's super straightforward, so it doesn't require you to have a file a system or a Kafka topic, but obviously you can do it. I just want you, as soon as we finish this stream, to try it out yourself and see how easy it is to use with Hazelcast. Now we're going to create in-memory client for Quadrant. And from here, we're going to create the collection for movies. So this will allow me to actually decide what vector size I'm going to use, what type of um, similarity function I'm going to use. So I'm using the cosine similarity distance between two vectors and as well as having encoding the description. So 
In here, uh, as soon as we move into the similarity search, we're trying to encode description and same thing for the search query. So this will allow me to vectorize the description. And if you are as a end user, say for example, I wanna search for ramen noodles um, as you know keyword. So if you remember a movie about ramen noodles, you're not sure what movie it was that you watched, uh, you can use this as search query. Obviously, this will be encoded and then you get results. In results, you get movies that are relevant as well as the score as well here. So up to this point, uh, vector databases are great, but now how can I actually enrich it? How can I boost the similarity search? Of course, you need a platform or an architecture to use it in terms of performance, latency, as well as the mix and match or you know many-to-many -many relationship. And obviously, when it comes to having a, for example, specific conditions, you can do it with vector databases. In fact, also vector databases provide metadata or you know as some kind of actors you can attach to it, but it's not going to give you the many-to-many -many relationship. So, as I mentioned, you can do some filtering with databases. Now, this is the second use case, and this is what you want to try, right? And see the benefits of it. So. From here, we see we're going to import Hazelcast. Obviously, I'm using Python again. I'm using the Python client. I'm going to use JSON format and using SQL. I will create two maps inside Hazelcast. So one map to store casts and one map to store actors. Of course, you need to execute it on the SQL client. And in here, you're going to end up with two maps within Hazelcast. And as soon as you generate this, uh, or sorry, you execute this query, you will have two maps and you can actually populate it with the data. So you see actors will have ID, name, and how popular this actor is. And same thing for cast, you will have ID for the movies and the ID. So essentially casts allow you to have many to many relationship. It's very cool because now suddenly you move from just searching for description to search for descriptions and actors. So if you remember, for example, a you know a movie which has ramen noodles in it and you search for a specific actor, this is where Hazelcast can actually also enhance or improve your similarity search. And of course, if you re don't remember exactly, so you can use like you know a part of the description or part of the actor name and you can specify popularity as well so our results here will become that the name of the movie and now this is the how popular the uh, the actor is obviously now with this search we end up having a combination between movies id and actors so we get to apply the same concepts and features for Hazelcast into creating this mix and match or many-to-many -many relationship. So that's pretty much I, what I wanted to cover. I know it's a lot to take in, and I don't want to, you to think about how uh, you know solve all problems in vector databases and also how to actually improve it. What we want to think about is how you can first apply many to many to relationship and ha second how you can minimize latency so again if you're interested in this topic uh, i would encourage you to join the community slack where you can ask questions we will make sure to send you the code afterwards and if you have some time this weekend this is how fast essentially you can download hazelcast play around with it doesn't have to be relevant to uh, similarity search uh, or it could be more related to combination between steam processing and fast data store. Um, if you got stuck for any reason, reach out to me or you know leave questions in, on community Slack. We would love to hear about your use cases. So this is your chance to actually see what you can do with the platform. And with that being said, I'm gonna stop here and open the stage for questions. Thank you. Thanks, Waz. 
All right. Let's see. Um, couple questions for you. Uh, how to run Hazelcast locally? Yeah, I think, uh, thanks for the question. So um, I think it's a very important question is how to get started with Hazelcast. And we, we provide a couple of options. So for the person who is interested in running it locally, Um, simply you can, it's just jar file, which you can add it to your um, Java project as a jar file in POM file. So this is straightforward. You get it embedded in your application. But also, for example, you can have it in client server mode. So this is second way of, you know, um, deploying Hazelcast. Um, you can run it in Docker if you want, like I did today. but also you can run it on, in Kubernetes as well. So a couple of options, um, you can pick and choose what you prefer. And uh, the easiest way to get started is just to download the jar file and play with it. Um, it's straightforward, it's very simple. Uh, if you actually know stream processing, you know how hard it is to get up and running and creating pipelines, maintaining is tough task and challenging task with Hazelcast, make it straightforward, a couple of lines and you're good to go. Awesome. We'll share those links um, after this session. Uh, do we need a vector database? Um, so this is a very interesting question. Uh, do we need a, a vector databases for such solutions? Um, so vector databases are great. If you just have unstructured data and you want to do some kind of similarity search, you can go wrong with vector databases. But in terms of uh, limitation, the vector databases Uh, kind of like in challenging in many to many relationships or even like when latency and real time responses. So uh, for to answer the question, not really, you don't need vector databases. Uh, we're working on creating some features for semantic search and uh, vector, uh, vector um, databases. So in essentially in simple terms, if you already have a vector database, um, I would encourage you to link it into Hazelcast So see how your vector database, whatever you're using, how it works with Hazelcast. I try to play around it. So create a vector application, a similarity search application, and see how you can ingest it into Hazelcast. If you don't have vector database, um, my suggestion is just to download Hazelcast, learn Hazelcast, learn the real-time capabilities, and of course the same processing and fast digester. As soon as you are up and running with Hazelcast, reach out to me. I can I can show you what you need for to to you to you know avoid using Victor database. Awesome. Thanks, Was. And lastly, um, how to download today's demo? Yeah. So this should be on GitHub. Uh, so it's open source. You can try it out. Um, we tried a SQL demo. We tried Python demo. There is a Java demo. Um, so. For the person who asked this question, feel free to reach out to me. Um, I'm on LinkedIn, Twitter, or just post it on the community Slack, but I will make sure whoever signed up um, so for this uh, webinar and this office hours um, to send the link as well. So if you haven't signed up, I would encourage you to sign up uh, for our office hours. We try to run it on a monthly basis, and I'm already looking forward for the April session. And um, yeah, so this is why we try to send you. So we'll make sure that you have access to the code. Uh, either reach out to me or, you know, sign up and then we will send you the link. Yeah, awesome. And so for anybody re-watching it on Restream later today, feel free to tag Fawaz for any questions you may have. Um, but I think that is it. Thanks, Fawaz. Yeah, gl glad to actually talk about this topic. Very important. the topic so anyone who's watching us make sure to sign up for the office hours for april session and so this is going to be a really big announcement and thanks so much for you miss and for the audience see you next week